Hello and welcome along to TV Yorkshire. It's time for the Yorkshire Football Show with me, Danny Parkinson. We're going to have a full look at everything that's been happening in the world of Yorkshire sport. We're going to be looking at Huddersfield Town as the bubble burst over there. Leeds United, uh, they're going to be still as strong when it comes around to Christmas. Rotherham, what a mess they're in at the moment. And uh, York, because they're always in a mess. So it's always good to have a bit of a chat about that as well. And to join me to talk all about it, uh, Derek Clark and Sam Bridges. Thanks for joining us, lads. Thanks for having me. Well, let's start off with Leeds United. Uh, big win at the weekend against Rotherham. Couldn't quite do it in the quarterfinals of Capital One Cup, but yeah, not bad going also. Yeah, very good season so far for Leeds United, as we keep saying, Danny, and keep reminding you of your predictions earlier in the season. But oh, yeah, very good go. uh, performance. Uh, and, and good at the weekend to get the win against Rotherham. Uh, they played well first half. Not so good second half, but again, mm. it was get the job done time and, and make sure you get over the line and uh, throw bodies in the in the way uh, when it counts. So they're, they're proving this season they've got a bit more metal than they, they previously had under different regimes and, and Gary Monk doing a, a very good job. And then, yeah, a good performance in the, the League Cup uh, against Liverpool. I think Gary Monk will, will take a, a lot away from, from that and the way his players performed and dealt with you know a big occasion, big crowd and you know, coming up against some, some stellar names. So, yeah, I think for Leeds at the moment, it's, it's going very well, as people keep saying too well maybe but uh, the progression is there for, for all to see of what Gary Monk has, has done and, and managed to achieve so far which, which for me is just um, really good stability and a, a real solid spine to that team mm, very solid spine but maybe a bit thin on the ground at the moment Gary Monk uh, said that himself after that game yeah. against Liverpool uh, at the end of the day they've got a couple of injuries but hopefully that won't start on too much in the Christmas fixtures yeah uh, congested uh, December and January coming up but I think they need another striker for me um, to uh, support Chris Wood up top uh, Hadi Sacco I missed a couple of chances last night you really need to be putting them away especially against teams like the calibre of Liverpool mm -hmm. um, I also think they need to tie up Janssen and Bartley on longer contracts yeah. permanent contracts as well and obviously Gary Monk as well because he's in a rolling deal so you need to tie him up and mm. um, sort his future out because um, it looks like he's doing the business yeah to be fair if I was a Premier League club Sam I'd probably be looking at Gary Monk and thinking he was probably quite harsh what happened at Swansea and managed mm. to uh, create something over at Leeds United that's not been done in quite some time a real good sense of optimism yeah uh, exactly yeah, I think there will be a few clubs looking at him but I think Gary Monk now knows that this period of his managerial career, you know, second job, second chance, you, you've got him and maybe stick at a club for a, a little bit longer and maybe not jump out if a couple of approaches uh, do come. And uh, Leeds, it can be unstable and, you, and you, you, you can have uh, the threat of the sack as he did do earlier in the season. Mm. But, uh, you know, for as long as, as he can, and hopefully, fingers crossed, everything stays nice and quiet and stable off the pitch for him um, that he, he can build to it at least and that's what he's got to show now in his managerial career he was in at Swansea and you know they had this uh, the, the way they did things uh, there was you know a manager when a new manager came in and it was almost seamless a bit like Southampton doing but it's now in a bit of a mess for, for Swansea and yeah I think it was a bit harsh and not really his fault and he was maybe trying to change things too much at Swansea uh, that the owners didn't want so maybe a bit of a clash there but for Leeds you know it's a, a bit of a, a blank canvas really they didn't really have a, a style of play they didn't really have much there was a lot of players from a lot of different managers in there so, so he's come in had a look at it and made a few important changes but he's still working with a lot of the players that, that were already there so I think yeah Derek's right you know he'll be looking to to add more players to, to that mix come January maybe ship one or two out to, to free some uh, players off the wage bill and have a good go at it and you know, I, I can't see any reason why Leeds won't be in the, the top six mix coming into that, that period in the in the new year I think all right, one or two injuries are starting to creep in but you can say that for the, the whole division at, at the moment you know, uh, there are a lot of uh, thin squads um, some big squads some big teams coming back into it um, but I think if you look at the teams that are around Leeds the, the likes of, of Birmingham they're in a quite a similar position I'd argue Leeds are in a stronger position really than, than they are with the amount of players the amount of loan players Birmingham do have to rely on so yeah it is just, just getting those little bits tied up and then I think they can have a real good run uh, for, the, for the top six and you know, who knows maybe even, even better no, it's a recurring theme of these Yorkshire football shows. I don't think you're a big fan of Birmingham, are you, Sam? Because every time it's like, <laughs> Birmingham are there, and they're not going to be there soon, they'll go. Well, it's just looking at Birmingham. They're a good side, well organised under, under Gary Rowett. But you look at what happened last season. Again, they're in a similar situation. They had a, a lot of lone players that they had to, to rely on. You know, you look, Leeds have got 
Chris Wood who, who's there and you know, people say maybe Leeds don't have enough but uh, Birmingham relying on uh, Jukovic uh, on loan from Burnley so they've got an on loan mm. striker that's doing the business for them and, and it's just been that extra added value for them this year whereas you know Leeds have got a, a player that they didn't really have much of last year because he had a lot of injuries but now he's fit and he's he's firing and scoring goals yes he does need some help they do need a, another striker you know, to come in alongside him um, but they've, they've got him there you know and, and people you know down in Birmingham will be probably asking the, the same kind of questions Birmingham need to get uh, Jukovic signed up on a on a long term contract because you never know you know what can happen and players can can get recalled. So I think that you look at the other teams. There are a lot of arguments to make that you know they could lose players. That you know players on loan could go back. Deals can can run out and you know all of a sudden they're in a position that a lot of people say in Leeds will be in uh, and and might well be in if the likes of Janssen or, or Bartley uh, do go. So I think you can make a case for quite a lot of teams in this division this year. And I think. Uh, I can make a stronger case for Leeds than some of the others. Oh, you might be off the Christmas card list for Gary Rowett sometime soon. Uh, but let's hear from uh, Gary Monk. He was speaking to our man, Matt Wilson, after that game against Liverpool. Gary, you asked your team to come and express themselves. I think it's fair to say they did that, didn't they? Yeah, I think um, I asked them to play in a slightly different way to what we've been playing tactically, which we had to do coming here to Anfield against a, a very good side. And um, But we followed it to a tee. I thought the only thing lacking was us taking one of quite a few opportunities. I think we had the best chances in the game. Um, what it needed was just that little bit more composure. That's the only negative from the performance was just a little bit more composure, a um, little bit of better decision making in that final third, and, and we would have had a couple of goals. A little bit of unluckiness as well. You look at Kamar's shot, that definitely deserved a goal, and I think that was the only thing that was lacking from our performance. But overall, I just said the players and I was gutted for them, I thought. As a performance for a team that's very young, uh, very inexperienced, um, these type of nights to set a marker for yourself, like we have been doing step by step all season, the way that we're growing. Um, I said that's the type of, of mentality and spirit that you have to have, as well as the quality, and, and if you want to be successful. So um, tonight will be, a, uh, albeit we're disappointed at this moment in time, I'm sure that they'll look back in the, in the next day or so and, and realise that they put on a very good performance. Is that the overriding feeling, disappointment? Yeah, because we hold a very high standard. Um, the environment that we work in here and we've created is um, sort of a very high standard. So when we lose a game, we're not happy with that, um, whoever we play against. Um, but it's very, you know, I'm not going to criticise my team, really, to be honest with you, because um, I thought they were magnificent tonight, albeit a little bit of better luck, a little bit more composed finishing, we would have probably had a different result. People have heard a lot about your youngsters and some of them really stood up and showed what they made of tonight. Yeah. Um, we work very closely with them. It's important that they have these experiences very early in their careers, and they've been doing it throughout the season. We've a lot of our performances. We've been learning in our performances um, for those young guys. So um, each time they take a step forward, which is the pleasing bit, and um, we continue in that way. Um, hopefully, we can be successful and, and get to where we want to be. I think you can see with our fans the size of this club. Um, we want to try and make this type of fixture a more regular. Um, fixture. Um, if we continue in this way, whether it happens this season or next season or whenever it happens, if we continue in this way, hopefully um, these players in this group can achieve that. Has it come at a cost tonight? Obviously, you lost Cooper and Orkia. Yeah, um, I don't think anything's too serious to be honest with you. Um, we can't afford many injuries. We've got a very thin squad as it is. Um, but I think as well, considering we had to chop and change and we had a, a makeshift back four at one point, um, but that's part of the work that we do. That. Everyone understands their roles and responsibility wherever they have to play on the pitch. And, um, and I thought to the very end, um, we pushed Liverpool. And, and like I said, on another night, um, we could. So let's make that short trip down the M62 over to Huddersfield because they've been in action this week, uh, playing on a Monday night of all times as well. Um, the, the Monday night football, you never quite got that sort of stardom feeling with uh, Burnley against West Brom. So they decided to go for Huddersfield <laughs> against Wigan yeah. instead. Um, I think it's one that Huddersfield Town fans will want to forget pretty quickly. Massive amounts of possession. There was a thin line between winning and losing, but it's not really acceptable to lose in those home games. Well, no, and especially, obviously, Wigan are on a, a little bit of a, 
uh, a revival that they're starting to pick up, show better performances, but still Huddersfield Town at home on a, on a Monday night, uh, I think we said many times, no, the home form is going to be key to what Huddersfield Town continue to do this season, whether they continue to be a top six team, whether they drop out and maybe plateau out into to mid-table. So, yeah, a, a game they, they should have won. Uh, I think they'll be disappointed that they, they didn't. Like you said, a lot of possession. Uh, and like Derek said about, about Leeds at, at times against Liverpool, not making it count and uh, and putting the ball in the net when it when it matters. I think that's mm. becoming a, a little bit of a theme now for, for Huddersfield. And a few people have said that maybe a, uh, some of the more savvy managers in the division are starting to, to work them out a little bit more now and realise that they can have a lot of the ball. But... Um, you know, unless they're really on, on song and on, on flying form then you know, they, they maybe have one or two problems you know, getting the, the goals required and they're always liable to, to leak a couple at, at the back so work to be done for, for David Wagner he'll, he'll know that, he's come out and said it but he's, he's starting to see the, the turn now a little bit and the, the consistency was there at the start of the season is starting to slide I think the difference between the start of the season, the last few for me, is there were very fine margins in between them winning and losing. They could have quite easily have lost that game against Wolves where they won 2 1, just about won it against a very good Walter Zenger Wolves side. Uh, I know I keep bringing up Walter Zenger's yeah. Wolves side. Hmm. I was just so impressed, I can't believe he went. It just it makes no sense but to This me. was your Rotherham argument that they were bottom of the league with about four points a few weeks ago, uh, but mm. they, they should have had more because it's fine margins and they should have had more points on the board. It's, so we'll, it's the same. We'll get on to Rotherham. We will get on to Rotherham. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I need to put a few things to bed with this because it, yep. it does keep coming up to bite me does this thing with Rotherham uh, but with Huddersfield I don't think it is a very very fine man I mean looking against Wigan two penalties should have been given to Huddersfield blatant penalties in mm. my opinion should have been given to Huddersfield they didn't get them they just didn't get that rub of the green Derek, how, how do you imagine it do you think it's one of those where it is just a blip, bit of a blip at the moment or um, we well it's, now, it's four games without a win now isn't it so um, it's understandable that many people are thinking the wheels have come off Um they can't defend set pieces and mm. the terror supporters are, are becoming a bit frustrated at that and they can't put teams to bed. They're going to have to buy a striker for me in January and it looks like they're going to lose a striker as well. Naki Wells is not signing that contract. Um, for me, I'd get rid of him. If, you don't want, if, if a player doesn't want to be there, um, you're as well just um, offloading them. So for me, they're going to have to buy two players. Mm. So it remains to be seen if David Wagner is going to shop around maybe in the German market again, try and get someone in. I'm not too sure who they can bring in uh, of any serious quality, um, but that could be the difference between going up and not. Yeah, I totally agree there. I mean, there were a lot of town fans at the start of the season that were talking about getting in the third striker, talking about you know having an mm. extra option there. Vada says you can't keep them all happy, and they can't keep too happy at this moment in time. But no. Naki Wells, I think it is time. I agree with you. I think it's time to get rid of But I don't think it's the end of the world. I think Elias Kajunga is a much better player oh, in that yeah. position at the moment. You're going to get somewhere, I reckon, over £8 million at least for a player that's got a year and a half left on his mm. contract. And as we know from David Wagner, he's quite shrewd in the markets in, in terms of Germany. Yeah. He might have signed someone out there already. Yeah, he may very well do. I mean, January's a, a tough uh, time to buy anybody because uh, often it's players that aren't getting a game that, that are offloaded. So um, it's hard to get someone that's going to come in and hit the ground running. But uh, for me, Huddersfield do need to get another front man in there because they're struggling to score goals. I think their goal difference isn't very good considering their, uh, their league placing. So um, that has to be a priority for me. Mm, no doubt about that. And there is a certain someone that's been sat on the bench at Middlesbrough throughout the Premier League season in Jordan Rhodes. He's, he's be absolutely perfect in that kind of situation. Oh, he's a big target man, isn't he? And mm. he knows where the back of the net is. Obviously played at Huddersfield before. Uh, knows um, his way to goal. So for me, he'd be a, a terrific signing. Mm. Uh, it remains to be seen if they can get him on a permanent deal or would it be a loan move? Mm. And will uh, Eter Karanka get rid of him? That's very true. That's very true indeed. But maybe a little bit of a loan deal might just about help him out. But uh, we will wait and see. Uh, David Wagner was speaking to uh, Radio Yorkshire after that game against Wigan on Monday night. Uh, David, first off, what are your thoughts on tonight? Uh, disappointing. A little bit frustrated as well because I think the lads invested everything. Uh, they tried everything. They played with energy, uh, enthusiasm. We created moments. Um, we brought a big part of our identity onto the grass. Uh, we had today uh, penalty situations uh, where, in my opinion, we at least have to got to get one. Uh, no, we have to get two. To be fair, and uh, uh, our only problem was. Um, 
that we were not uh, good enough uh, to avoid their counterattacks, and then we got this uh, defeat, uh, which hurts, of course. Would you say that the penalty shouts that got turned down changed the game? I think um, if you have the chance with uh, two penalties, uh, I think one was when it was 1-1, the other one, I, I, I'm not sure if we were 2-1 back in the situations. Yeah, it, uh, I think it has influence of the, of the game if this happens, uh, especially in the period where we were very, very active. But at the end, uh, uh, we have to accept these decisions, but they hurt to to be fair, of course, they hurt, and uh, we have to make sure that we uh, take the positive in the middle point. This was um, how we work today with the ball, that everybody invested everything. I think they were a big part of our identity on the grass, but we should not uh, uh, forget to uh, think about and blame ourselves uh, how we defended their, their counter uh, attacks two goals and the two other uh, big counter situations they created this is what we have to do better I mean that's what must be frustrating is that dominated possession had more chances and have come away with nothing yeah uh, but sometimes uh, in football you don't get what you deserved I think uh, on the other side we have to give credit to Wigan they, 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 they have their game plan or they have their game plan with counter and it worked for them uh, but more or less because we were in these two situations where we conceded the goals uh, not strong enough. We, we, we were too, too slow in our head uh, and in our legs. Uh, but to be fair, uh, this is the quality, the speed up front, what they have. But this is what we have to handle better in the situation. And unfortunately, we didn't handle this better. Uh, but on the other side, as I said, there were very, very uh, positive moments in our game today. And um, at, at the end, we have to accept this uh, uh, result and these decisions, and we have to go forward. Any news on Mark Hudson or Sean Scannell? Um, Mark Hudson has a hamstring injury. Uh, he looks like, or he, he will be out for sure on Saturday as well, Tommy Smith with his fifth yellow card. And uh, Scanny got very early a knock on his uh, calf when, where the opponent get the yellow card. and. Uh, I think uh, there will be a big question mark for him for Saturday. It's one win in seven now. Is that a worrying statistic for you? This is a statistic uh, which is true, but uh, everybody knows stats. Are, I'm not a favorite of uh, a fan of stats. Uh, we have to make sure that we take it uh, game by game. Uh, this is what we did today. We were very focused on, on Wigan. Uh, played some good stuff, didn't get the result, and we will be very focused on Blackbird as well. I mean, lots of chances. Just it's just getting over that line. It's getting those chances, converting them into goals that was missing this evening. Yeah, I think we had uh, three great header situations. Uh, Kashunga very early, Phil Billing in the second half, uh, Casey Palmer as well. We, we we scored a great goal. Again, there were. Uh, uh, two maybe three penalty situations this shows how dangerous you are in the opponent's box and we scored a goal so i'm not sure if we can ask for more than five six seven uh, very good situations in the opponent's box uh, but uh, again we only scored one and uh, lost this game did you get any explanation from the referee at the end about the two penalties um, I only have spoken with him that I, I think he had the best uh, view on, on, on the uh, Naki situation. This was what I said, I'm not able to see this. Um, I was sure from my point of view uh, that uh, Kashunga's one was a clear 100% penalty. And to be fair, after I've seen the, uh, the clips, <laughs> it is. <Much> worse. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the handball situation, uh, in his opinion, uh, it was the shoulder. Uh, I thought it is uh, uh, the, uh, the arm, and he's active uh, uh, with his shoulder or with his arm. Um, so I only have spoken about with him uh, about him uh, with him about this situation. But uh, at the at the end, maybe 
uh, there was a little bit traffic before him, but then his assistant uh, have to have a good uh, view on the situation. But again, we have we have to accept it. Uh, doesn't help at the moment. David Vardy there speaks to our man Jack Deaton after that game against Wigan on Monday night. One, I think the Huddersfield fans will be hoping to put out there out of their memory sooner rather than later. Well, let's take the trip over to the KCOM. Um, they actually managed um, a very nice win against yeah. uh, Newcastle. They weren't even favourites at home against the Championship side. I suppose it shows just where Hull are at the moment. But they managed to get the result in the end, Eric. Great character they showed um, against Newcastle. Newcastle first half. Uh, by far the better team had a number of chances. Modi Ami with the, an absolute sitter in front of goal headed over the bar. Um, a forgettable second half, but then Newcastle took the lead in, lead in extra time. Diami with a goal. Um, then you're thinking they'll go on and, and, and finish the job off, but within seconds, the man of the moment, Robert Snodgrass, equalises. Um, and Hull just managed, they've, they've got something about them. Uh, they never know when they're beaten. And I think that's a, a massive quality to have, especially in the Premier League. They're going to be fighting against relegation all this uh, all campaign. Uh, and and Bacani gets sent off as well for a headbutt at the end of the, the regulation 90. So they were down to 10 men. So it just shows you the character they've got in the sides. And that reaching the, the League Cup semi finals for the first time ever as well. I'm sure Mike Phelan will be delighted to that. And uh, I'm sure he'll be hoping that that can act as a springboard. Uh, to the league campaign and hopefully stave off relegation. Yeah, no doubt about that. I've said it many times on the Oak Football Show talking about Robert Snodgrass. Um, mm. It was out obviously for the last Premier League campaign, but if there's one player that yeah, has that little bit of flair, something about him at Hull, it's oh, he's class. Snoddy. Yeah, certainly. He was he was the one player that can unlock defences, and especially when M. Bacani gets sent off, you're looking at someone that can uh, provide a moment of magic, uh, albeit it was Henriksen's shot, it was saved by the Newcastle keeper, but Snodgrass was there at the right time to, to finish it off. And he also scored his, his penalty kick as well. So he's certainly uh, the sort of guy you want in the trenches when you're going to try and uh, fight off relegation. And when you're in the League Cup last four, I mean, you can reach Wembley again. It's been interesting to see what happens uh, in January. So they've still got the, the takeover situation hanging on. They, they desperately need to bring in more players to aid the likes of Robert Snodgrass. But now you're adding in a two-leg semi-final in, in January to, to play uh, after a, a difficult Christmas period. So the games are going to keep coming uh, for, for Mike Phelan and, and Hull City. So it's, it's, it just makes that period now. The next two months are going to be really intense for them and uh, the amount of games that they've, they've got to play. And we don't know the position that they're in. Um, but but Derek, they, they do keep going. They do have that character. And Mike Phelan's done a really good job, in my opinion, with his, his hands tied behind his, his back. But it's time that he, obviously the, the board need to really help him out the, the start of January and they need to, to do something really early on uh, just to, to make sure that they, they can maybe capitalise on this. You know, potentially, you know, could get a, a, some exciting teams in there in the, the last four now. But you know, it's, it is a, a ch real chance for them to, to get to Wembley and you know, make some real success of, of this season. You know, even if they do go down a, a Wembley trip with what's happened at home and the amount of players that they've had would be uh, fantastic so yeah uh, good luck to them and hopefully uh, they can get a bit of luck in, in the market and, and injuries can stay off and, and give Mike Phelan a, a, a bigger boost well as we were just talking about that Sam uh, our man Derek Clark sat right here went to speak to him to speak to Mike Phelan is it a welcome headache Mike in January you're going to have Two extra games, obviously, in the Cup is going to be a congested month as well. Hopefully, December, January, we've got to look forward to. We've got all the big hitters in January, I think, and we possibly will draw another one <laughs> in this uh, in this semi-final. But, listen, life's full of challenges. This football club has to rise to that challenge. Hopefully, we can have a few more bodies around in January to be able to do that. If not, we go into it full of optimism, you know. We're against it, but, but I think the players are showing some real, real character. Now, if you think Hull are in trouble, it's nowhere near the crisis over at Rotherham, at the bottom of the championship table. And Kenny Jackett, well, he grabbed his coat after only 38 days in charge at the New York Stadium. Uh, it really is uh, bad times down there, Sam. It's... Um it's been pretty chaotic to say the least these uh, this last couple of years for Rotherham. Yeah, ridiculous really when you look at, at the the amount of managers and the amount of time that each each one has, has spent in the job. Uh, just five games for for Kenny Jacket, Neil Redfern, uh, the one since uh, Steve Evans left with the, the most amount of games. I think it was twenty one that he had, sixteen for Neil Warwick, fourteen for for Alan Stubbs. It just just shows that the inconsistency and the lack of stability that they do have. Um, you don't really know the words that have been said behind the scenes and 
Um, but it's yeah, it's a difficult a period. Obviously, that they've made the decision to sack managers before. This is slightly different in in the fact that Kenny Jacket is is walking out and uh, and quitting. But for a guy like him to to walk out of a job, it must be seriously bad at, at Rotherham mm. behind the scenes and the, and the the you know the the players and, uh, that he's inherited and, and the squad because it, you know he, he doesn't seem like that that kind of character to just just get up and walk out after to five games. So I think that that tells you everything you need to know about about Rotherham and the, and the plight that they're in. So yeah, really difficult times. And you know where do they go next? Look at the, the betting market, Tony Mowbray being the, the odds on favourite now for the job. Was sat by Coventry, a mm. real terrible uh, twelve months uh, for them really, and you know they were flying high towards the top of League One at kind of this time last year but then you know, ended up near the bottom and then have been at the bottom uh, since the start of this season before he was uh, relieved of his duties so yeah, a guy like that who's on it, when it's, things are right he's a, he's a good manager but he's walking into an, another club where you know things aren't right and there's a lot of work to, to be done and just you know is he the right man? I'm not sure. Maybe it does take maybe someone like a, a Paul Warren who's going there as assistant who knows and loves the club inside out just to to start again and rip it out. We, we mm. kind of thought that Kenny Jacket might be that guy who's come in and it, it wasn't going to be the, the Neil Warnock save your job, but it was maybe, you know, let's let's start to make changes now and go back down stronger and then come back up from, from League One and, and give it a good shot next season but mm. for that you're just left scratching your head of, of what's going on and, and where do they go and just how the season's going to end for them mm, that's very true I'm just happy you didn't steal my jacket joke then as well so I thought for a couple so of times if Rotherham in crisis your, your script writer's in crisis no well, well yeah no, that's true um, yeah. but <laughs> so Derry who, who wants that job between well, now and me put it this way they're going down so whoever takes it you've got that on your CV you, you've got them relegated at the mm. end of the day it might not be your fault but they're going down it's a job for me for someone new to management I think um, like it could be uh, your man warning and caretaker charge he might be the man um, just give him till the end of the season see what he can do um, and then start afresh next season because um, I'm not too sure there's going to be too many managers that's going to want that that position there will be a few don't get me wrong but are they the right men for the job I'm not too sure um, and you guys like Kenny Jacket leaving you can only assume it, it's about money and about transfer f funds that he's been promised that he's not going to be uh, getting um, because that that does seem that that does seem a strange one. That mm, yeah, there's no doubt about that. After everything we've seen at Rotherham, I mean, I have to admit, I did uh, say that I thought it was too early to call them down. I think it's uh, maybe it's you should get the job, say. Danny. I, mean, I think I should get the job. Can you do any worse? That's true. I yeah. could do no worse if you, I picked up got seven the points. Optimism. Yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> That's what they need. yeah, you're right. And I, I know Tony Stewart not very well, but um, if you're listening, Tony, uh, watch it. Um, but yeah, let's see how it goes. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'll I'm put not, my CV in. I think it shows though, just maybe how bad a decision it, it was to get rid of Neil Redfern last season. Mm. So he, he argues his his record was as good as Neil Warnock's when he went in. You know, he'd only lost a. A couple of games really and was doing all right they were, they were mm. winning a couple losing a couple it wasn't like it is now and, and yeah. you know down the, the bottom uh, of the league when he came in he did make an impact and you know he's the kind of guy uh, as a coach who would you know, develop players and nurture players and uh, and that's seemingly what Rotherham needed at that time and then you know, they, they ripped it up all right Neil Warnock came in did a, did a great job and, and kept them up but then in in the summer they had they had to start again and now we're saying you know, it's almost a wasted season, really, because they they're yep. gonna go down, and then we're saying they're gonna have to start again in the summer, which is what they did last summer. So it's mm. it's just a complete waste of time um, when you had someone there who was a, a good young head coach who'd had shown good signs when he was at Leeds and, and was sacked maybe unfairly. He, certainly Neil would argue um, that he, you you've just lost some of that talent, and now we're saying who who they're going to attract. Mm, that is very true indeed. Uh, Don't you think? Tony Stewart's actually a victim of his own success over at Rotherham. You know, everything he's managed to achieve, getting them yeah. a new stadium, getting them promoted, it almost seems like the, the scale of the club, you know what I mean? He's, um, he's just I'm not too it, sure, and especially with the Stubbs appointment as well, I'm not too sure, I'm trying to be kind here, he knows exactly what he's doing in terms of appointing a right manager. I think he needs a bit of help there, because he's obviously appointed Alan Stubbs based on the fact he won the Scottish Cup, otherwise he wouldn't be appointing them because Hibs had a, a poor season, let's be honest, finishing third in the Championship, they didn't go up. Um, so they appointed Alan Stubbs, uh, it, it turned out to be a bad move and then 
like uh, uh, Sam said about getting rid of uh, Neil uh, Neil Redfern as well. Poor move. Uh, they should have kept tried moved heaven and earth to keep uh, Neil Warnock in, in charge. They never done that. And then Kenny Jackett's walked. So it's obvious that things aren't right behind the scenes. I think he needs to get someone in just to help him. Yeah, and you just look at the, those guys. You you had Steve Evans was there, a, a yeah. more experienced guy that that made a, an impact over a long time. Then they went for Neil Redfern, who was a, a young up and coming coach, you know, new to to first team management really after his, his short spell at, at Leeds. Then they went for Neil Warnock, an experienced guy in the summer. They went for Alan Stubbs, another guy that's not been around too long. He's, mm. he's, he's been up in, in Scotland doing what he's doing, but learning his craft. So again, a, a younger manager that you're appointing, and then went for Kenny Jacket, an experienced manager. And now what are they going to do? They're going to go for a young yeah. manager in, in Paul Warren. They're going to go for an experienced guy in Tony Mowbray. He, he doesn't seem to know what he wants and what direction mm. he wants to take them in. Mm, no, you're right there. Certainly worrying times over at Rotherham. Remember to get in touch as well. What do you think of the Rotherham situation? Get in touch in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe to TV Yorkshire today. Uh, let's move on uh, down to uh, Sheffield Wednesday because uh, picking up a big win this weekend, Derek, against Wolves and uh, maybe turning the tide now for what was a, a very poor Wednesday side last few weeks. Massive win for them because Carlos Carvajal was under a, a wee bit of pressure as well. Three games without a win. Um, they started to slip down the division. Um, but that's a terrific win, especially because it was on Paul Lambert's Molly new debut as well. So they might get the new new manager syndrome, especially at home. But they managed to get a, a record a fantastic win, keep a clean sheet as well. So a uh, great boost for, for Sheffield Wednesday. They needed that, um, and, and they'll be hoping to, to carry that forward into the, the next few games. You think we can maybe see Forestieri turning that corner now? Maybe. Well, they'll hope so because he's been a bit inconsistent this season. Um, Gary Hooper's obviously out now with a hamstring injury, so they're reliant on Forestieri to step up to the uh, step up to the plate. Uh, he did that on Saturday, um, and the Wednesday supporters will be hoping that he can continue that good form. So let's have a look over at Barnsley and take the trip down to Walkwell. You don't see many uh, five-two losses at home, Sam. No, yeah, and. Uh, They'll be concerned about that, uh, obviously, the, the results over the last 10 games not been great uh, at all. Only one win uh, against Brentford, which is uh, back in uh, October now. And they'd have, have three draws before the, the defeat um, last weekend. But uh, the, the results and the slide down the table is the, the most alarming thing, really, when you're starting to look, to look at the table. It seems to be taking shape now, a lot of the teams... They maybe struggled early season and changed managers, the likes of Villa and Derby. The impacts there are starting to show fruit now and they're starting to, to climb the table. So teams like Barnes, who we thought might be kind of around mid-table, lower mid-table, are now starting to get, get dragged into that relegation fight just because they've come up with a, a real tough run of, of fixtures and, and not been getting the, the right results. So, yeah, I think it is, again, obviously not, not last week, uh, the 5-2 defeat, but before that it was... Uh, bit more like you say before about fine margins and, and not quite getting the results but it's now you know how do you react to, to that kind of defeat and you know maybe that that's what it needed a bit um, I'm sure there was a, a few you know uh, words in the dressing room a few commentations maybe maybe that's what it needs a bit of a, a, a clear the air and, and, and start to maybe focus on how tough the championship actually is because I think uh, Paul Heckenbottom is new to the d division um, uh, and maybe trying to be just too uh, attacking and just, just going for it too much where we know that there's a lot of well-organised teams, a lot of strong teams in the, in the championship and you just can't do that again. So when results start to turn, they generally uh, do go on quite a dip and that's what they're on at the moment. Mm, yeah, very much seems that way. Uh, let's uh, drop down to League One. A uh, bit of a shock result for uh, Sheffield United, losing 1-0 to Walsall so they wasn't expecting that one Derek No by all accounts Chris Wilder after the game was absolutely furious he felt they should have had a, a couple of penalties I think um, a disallowed goal as well so uh, I'm not too happy down at Bramall Lane um, 15 match unbeaten run no terrific run they were on um, they're just two points behind Bolton uh, in third in League One I think they're going to be taking one of those automatic promotion places I think Chris Wilder's got them playing um, great football um, I think that's just going to be a blip if I'm being honest um, because they have been playing some, some good stuff and the, the, the sort of squad they've got there they've got some real quality so I expect them to take uh, one of the two automatic uh, promotion places Do you think it blows it wide open for the automatic Sam or do you think it's just a, like um, I say, a bit of a blip for Sheffield United Yeah I think it will be a blip you can't, you can't win every game you know, it's been a, a tremendous run they've been on as, as Derek said so yeah I think obviously you're going to get beat sometime um, they wouldn't want to get beat last night when you could have gone 
second and you, you need to be making the use of the, the game in hands when, when you do have them so yeah um, di disappointed on the night but uh, again you know it's it's a, a bit of a refocusing for, for Chris Wilde obviously he wasn't happy as as Derek uh, said so uh, again you know in, in a similar kind of way you, a defeat sometimes you know when you're on that, that winning run and things are just going maybe too right and you're getting away with certain things and the, you, the looks on your side at certain situations it's it's always good to have a, a you know a, a bit of a, a reality check and, and looking at where you are and where you can improve so I'm sure that's what Chris while they'll be doing in an interesting game at the weekend against Bolton shame it's not in the in the mm. league but in the FA Cup yeah mm. that's very true and at the end of the day Bolton with their financial problems at the moment you know we don't know exactly what's going to be happening around the January time but it might even throw it a bit further wide open there if uh, Bolton do go on a bit of a slide there as well let's have a look at Bradford City obviously they're involved in that automatic uh, promotion rush or at least I think they are uh, despite <laughs> what Tom Feeney's predictions were just the other week um, but yeah loss 1-0 uh, loss to Swindon uh, you can't really be dropping too many points out the road especially against sides like Swindon but as I've said quite a few times this week Sam uh, Swindon is not a happy <laughs> no. hunting ground for Bradford uh, no um, yeah I'll take your word for the, the history of it all but um, yeah, not a great result um, but uh, again they're, they're still well in the mix I know they've it, it's not been as consistent over the last few weeks for, for Bradford as, as earlier in the season but yeah, and again it's a, a tough division and you know, it's, it's a time of year where you know, games are, are coming thick and fast and you know, if you do get in a little bit of a, a slump then you know, maybe it, it, sometimes you know things don't go as well as they, they were doing it a, a few weeks ago everything's peaks and troughs and I think that, that Bradford will be there or thereabouts towards the, the end of the season I think they've they've shown so far under Stuart McCall they're a good side uh, well organised on their day I think they look a lot fitter than they have in previous seasons so I think they'll be uh, they'll be up there uh, and yeah I think they'll they can recover I don't think a, a loss to swim than they used to it Danny mm, good stuff, good I think, stuff. But I think similar like Huddersfield do you need to get a striker in in, in January because they struggle to put teams away. Uh, I mean, I watched them against Northampton last week, all over them, but they just couldn't find the back of the net. They eventually won a James Hansen header, but they need someone playing off him um, because they're not putting teams to bed, and that could come back to haunt them. Mm, that's true. I mean, you look back at that problem, that could be a problem considered for maybe four years, ever since Naki Wells went over to mm. Huddersfield, believe it or not. Well, he wants to leave Huddersfield. Bradford <laughs> push the boat out yeah, yeah. Well, well, German honest, Danny. Yeah. Have, a, have a look behind the sofa for an extra 8 million quid Bradford fans and let's go for it let's just do it um, but yeah that certainly will yeah. be very interesting time, the thing, yeah. this time of year you know a lot of people a lot of um, teams need a striker it's at Leeds need a striker Huddersfield need a striker Bradford yeah. need a striker mm. you know, it's, it's so difficult to find these days that, that guy that's going to get you 15-20 you know, goals a season mm. certainly is needed though definitely, oh, definitely. we're at everywhere yeah, no, that's fairly true. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's have a drop down to League Two then, lads, and have a look at Doncaster. Uh, three one winning against Leighton Orient. We can't go wrong with that, really. Uh, no, again, yeah, they, they've kind of been a little up and down of late. Obviously, still well in in the mix, but going into second place now, and, and that's that's where they should be for me. I think Donny should be, you know. Uh, maybe going on to, to win this this league this year and uh, it, that sticking with a you know a guy like like Darren Ferguson it, it almost kind of mirrors the the Rotherham thing we we're talking about with Kenny Jacket a guy that that you right, you might have to go down but you've got a guy who's experienced in that division he's he's better than that division he can get you back up mm -hmm. so um, yeah I, I see the mirrors there and I think that's what Darren Ferguson uh, will be doing with, with Donny this year no, no problem at all yeah, certainly looks that way, doesn't it? Yeah, great comeback as well because they went behind. It was a, a great uh, free kick from Leighton Orient, but they came back, showed great character. But some good teams in that division. Carlisle are, are flying high. Plymouth, obviously, uh, at the top as well. Uh, and Portsmouth are in there, so um, it's going to be an interesting race to see who goes up automatically. Yeah, you're right there. Uh, just a quick word on uh, York City. Sam as Mr York City in a, in a previous <laughs> life. Um, it's uh, a, a one-all draw with Geisley, 3-0 loss to Bromley, not won since September. Second bottom of the National League. It doesn't look much worse than it is at the moment. No, obviously they've yeah had huge problems uh, over the last uh, year or so. You know, it's, it's good to see Gary Mills back in there. You know, a good manager. Um, you had them playing some excellent football when they got promoted to the to the football league a, a few years ago. When I used to go and, and watch them quite a bit. And so yeah, th but it's it's going to take him him time. And you know, he built a real good team there, and it, it took a while to to put all the the. the the jigsaw pieces in place and then you do when you, you get a, a decent team that play decent football like like Gary Mills' side tend to do then league clubs come sniffing around you at your best players and it's a constant battle but he's in a, a huge uh, probably the, the biggest fight really um, 
of his life at York this year because it's just not at all going right. They just don't mm. seem to have any kind of team. Obviously, everything that's gone on off the pitch and just the, the strange scenario more than anything uh, with the relationship between uh, the chairman and, and Jackie McNamara and, and him hanging around. It's just, yeah, it's just not a... <laughs> just not a nice place that I would imagine to uh, to be. I obviously don't know the the, the working circumstances how it works day to day, but it just it just doesn't feel right at, at York, and I think they're in huge mm. trouble. I think Jackie McNamara should do a Tim Sherwood and get down on the touchline, <laughs> yeah. start kicking a few bottles. <laughs> all he needs is a gilet. Then he's yeah. sorted. Get him a gilet. Uh, we'll all chip in for one. Maybe York can turn some results around there. Uh, lads, as always, absolute pleasure. Thanks a lot for joining us, and uh, we'll remember to like and subscribe to TV Yorkshire. Today. Get in touch with those comments as well. Uh, let us know what you thought of the Yorkshire sides that have been on this week.